you'll see as you read this book that I'm a very imaginative titleist. Uh, um, the publisher had to come up with the title for the book. That previous poem was called um, Paul's Song to My Wife. This poem was called Love Poem for the Doctor's Wife. <laughs> I've held, withheld. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll begin again, but uh, the one thing you need to know is that all the bodies in the anatomy lab, all the dead bodies, they're all in love. Every one of them, you'll see what I mean. I've held, withheld. What's left in the ragged evening? Is it love? As a student of the scoundrel, I dissected the squelching old and rubbery young in the lab and wondered about what's left over. What was there last year? The conclusion of my internal organs? It's all pretty mortuary. I walked through the door smelling of formalin, though anatomy days were long ago, bloodless and like the cartoon skeleton playing its ribs like a xylophone jocularly dead. I am led here. I am led, and after I have stood and looked on death in between the middle ears, before the bad news, awaiting the good, and after the only ministry there is of flesh, I have you, you with a husband and a doctor, a wife who has withstood all this, who has been left countless times, and who holds the soul's sorrows at night in the operating room of dreams, who uses that old wife's tale sound on my morbid wound, who was like those beautiful blue tattoos on my corpse's arms. I'm dying off for Stella, for Gracie, for St. Joseph of Arimathea. Or was it Thea? They're all in love, these animated bodies, and I never romance. I offer all these words to you. And uh, continuing that imaginative title theme, this one's called Love Poem for the Doctor's Wife Revisited. <laughs> I put a lot more work into the poetry, but the uh, titles. Okay. Empress of weight, I address you. I do not cherish you less than me. It is true that in hospital call rooms I have reached out. You were not there. We both wait then. I have watched you through the small glass window that lit through the waiting room doors with only a moment. You sat there like a sacrament. I saw a man clutching his chest, saw coffee children playing with ancient toys touched by every possible germ. Your hands were folded on your lap. The ceiling mounted television did not hold your attention. I feel like a poor choice at these moments, as a veneer flaw that leads to interior flaws. I feel as if all promise were wagered and leveraged. And before I open the emergency doors, I think that the doors are meant to protect you, not us. That out here, I am engaged in the losing battle of the body, and that in there you are idealized perfection. But I grant myself a moment only, and walk through to the basis of predictions that you have been waiting all this time for me. Song of the most responsible physician. At five, I played doctor with a toy stethoscope, and only one illness for Mr. Bear. You're sick. Now I preside over lives that elope, over illnesses that hide, until they preside and steal. They call me a healer. Actually, I'm an actuary, an on-call odds maker. The farmer that closes the barn door after the horse thief made a home visit. At 25, degree on my wall, I looked to yellow yards and textbooks for wisdom and found data only. There is no preparation. People die, and I sold their silver, silver linings to grief. At five, my belief that doctors cure, that patients live, now I know the first truth, palliation, and survival. On the job, I learned to look the part, to harken back to five years old. People want a doctor that listens, that seems to care, that's sure. Not a witness head, but they want his faithless understanding as he massages their fat and chart, as his ballpoint pen dispels symptoms and makes a flat and blot of diagnosis. You're sick, I say, albeit in a different way. But I laugh at good jokes, and I reach for the tissues at teary times. 
and the word expectations is cursive on my prescription pad. That was a bad day at the office, so. <laughs> okay, so, uh, so uh, Michael Horn Show, anybody watch that? No? Nobody confesses to that? Um, <laughs> I do sometimes, and uh, Michael um, said something really rather remarkable one day while I was watching that. He said, you know, it, it was with regards to debate, you know, euthanasia and pain and things like that. I, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to pontificate. But he did say something rather remarkable. It was that all pain can be controlled. That was his statement. That all pain can be controlled. That there is no pain which we cannot master. And I'm here to tell you that that's just not true. So all pain can be controlled. This is a, this is a response to that comment. In the hack the limb off, pull out the tooth by tying it to a door jam, give the child something to cry about, cold showers are best, or just ice it, or suck it up, suck all of it up, punch your dad in the belly as he tightens his muscles, 10 on a scale of 1 to 10 just means a better amount of control, your lover looking at you and saying, are you feeling this yet? The torturer grinning and saying, have no fear, filling the airbag with nails, Stone in the bottom of the shoe for the faithless. Dreams of the euthanasia machine are best interrupted halfway through the logical end is death kind of way. <laughs> well, I think I've uh, pretty much read myself out of time, so I'll, uh, I'll go to the end in a couple. I'll skip a couple, and this is the final one. And um, this is my favorite metaphor in the office. Um, there are lots of metaphors in medicine, I'm sure you know. And, um, you know, cancer isn't the only the only province for metaphor. But uh, patients will say this to me, and I find it really rather remarkable. The falling apart one, you know, falling apart. Everybody says that. I'm falling apart. I'm sick. I'm falling apart. Somebody will come in with a cold, and they'll tell me they're falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> and then, you know, I'm just saying, like, I, I probably said it before, then somebody uh, will come in with heart failure and um, emphysema and uh, a skin infection and diabetes, and um, their wife will say they're falling apart. It's, it's, it's remarkable. Anyway, I thought of that. Anyway, I wrote this poem, and this is it. It's called The Law of Gravity. Falling apart, you say. Well, I piece together your mystery. I find bad choices. Avoided lease with the words take care, underlined, but small print. In my pocket, a potion. Behind my back, a victual, but answers. My small print on a prescription, scribbly doodle. It's a kind of cancer, the cursive path of the dreaded crab that snaps and clacks. You will be snipped. Surgeons will give you back to yourself on a slab where there's a cancer of answers. The crab won't slip, nor will it blab. And I will leverage hope and faith and love like a sad acrobat, like a broker in gravity, but no sage, except all things fall in parts. Thanks.